Hello and welcome to episode one of RuneScape Facts, YouTube's one and only show relating RuneScape stuff to the real lifescape. I'm your host, Andrew, and today we will be talking about stuff you may have thought Jagex made up, but actually exists or has some meaning. So let's jump right into it with our favorite fish, the monkfish. Despite its far-fetched name, the monkfish actually exists in the real world. Ugh. Ugly piece of shit, aren't they? The monkfish, known variously as the goosefish, anglerfish, or allmouth, is a large, ugly, benthic, i.e. bottom-dwelling fish, found in the coastal Atlantic area. Its sizes range to about three feet, and its body is composed mainly of a huge gaping mouth attached to a muscular tail. The monkfish is, in fact, an anglerfish, and its spine ends in a flexible, extensible cord which it dangles for use as a fishing lure. Monkfish are, in fact, edible, but the only edible portion is its tail and liver. So next time you're chomping into a monkfish, I would consider the consequences of possibly eating its head. That might not be so bad for you. But in any case, it still heals 160 life points, so uh, keep eating those monkfish. Next stop in RuneScape Facts is the Inferno Ads. Now, I'm sure you've seen these around RuneScape before. They're those weird-looking hatchets that can be doubled as a pickaxe. Now, I'm not sure the ones in real life can burn wood, but they are real. An adds is a tool used for smooth cutting rough wood in hand woodworking. Generally, the user stands astride a board or log and swings the adds downwards towards his feet, chipping off little pieces of wood, moving backwards as he goes and leaving a relatively smooth surface behind. Adzes are most often used for squaring up logs or hollowing out timber. It's also a tool of choice for building wreckers, laborers who dismantle old buildings by hand for salvage, and the single tool can serve all the needs of deconstruction with proper use. The blade of an is set at a right angle to the tool's shaft, like a hoe or, I guess, a plane, unlike the blade of an axe, which is set in line with the shaft. A very similar but blunt tool used for digging in hard ground is called a mattock. So, uh, light all those beacons in the real lifescape and uh, get your own ads. Number three this episode is two combined into one, adamant and mithril. Now, I know you noobs love your adamant and mithril, but where do the words come from? In fact, both of which have some reference in mythology. Adamant and similar words are used to refer to any especially hard substance, whether composed of diamond or some other genstone, or metal. Both adamant and diamond derive from the Greek word adamus, meaning untamable. Adamantite, like in RuneScape, and adamantium are also common variants. Adamant is mentioned several times in Greek mythology, when the titan Cronus actually castrated his father, Uranus, using an adamant sickle. An adamantine sickle, or sword, it's unknown, was also used by the hero Perseus to decapitate the gorgon Medusa. As some of you Lord of the Rings fans may know, Mithril was actually first mentioned in J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings books. Mithril is a fictional metal from the books, and it is described as silvery and stronger than steel, but much lighter in weight. The malleability, lack of tarnishing, and use of the metal in jewelry could also indicate a reference to platinum. The author first wrote of it in The Lord of the Rings, as mentioned before, and it was retrospectively mentioned in the third revised edition of The Hobbit in 1966. In the first, 1937 edition, the male shirt given to Bilbo was described as being made of silvered steel. Tolkien writes that Mithril was found only in Moria in Middle-earth, where it was mined by the dwarves. However, in Unfinished Tales, he writes that it also was found in Numenor, wherever the hell that is. The name Mithril itself comes from two words. Myth, meaning gray, and ril, meaning glitter. The metal's quena name is Mistarile. Mithril was also called True Silver or Moria Silver. The dwarves apparently had their own secret name for it. Number four is one for all you woodcutters out there, the yew tree. Scientifically known as Taxus baccata, it's a conifer native to western, central, southern Europe, northwest Africa, northern Iran, and southwest Asia. It is the tree originally known as yew, though with other related trees becoming known, it may now be known as the common yew, or European yew. Believe it or not, the European yew can be used in medicine. The drug Paclitaxel can be derived from the leaves. It's actually a more renewable source than the bark of the Pacific yew. Duh. This ended a point of conflict in the early 1990s. Many environmentalists, including Al Gore, opposed the harvesting of Paclitaxel for cancer treatments. So I only have one question. Jagex, where's the herb lore aspect of the yew tree? I want an update. Call me, baby. Now, Jagex actually did get one thing right with the yew tree because of the longbow. 
an early weapon of war developed in northern Europe, and as the English longbow, the basis for a medieval tactical system, yew was the choice wood for longbow making. The bows were constructed so that the heartwood of the yew, the inside stuff, is on the inside of the bow, while the sapwood, you know, that outside stuff, is on the outside of the bow. This takes advantage of the natural properties of yew wood, since the heartwood resists compression, while the sapwood resists stretching. Last but not least, number five, Dungeoneering. Now, Dungeoneering actually- wait. The fuck? This thing doesn't actually exist in real life. Who the fuck sent this to me? I want my producers on this right now! Come on! Sending me this fake bullshit, give me a break! <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode one of Rooms Game Facts. I'm your host, Andrew. Today, we'll be going over stuff, because I don't know my lines. As some of you Lord of the Fans ring, Lord of the Fans rings, fuck. Hello and welcome to episode one of the, I don't remember the title of my own show. How sad is that? 